Good morning, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And of course, uh, before I get in some of the uh, headline news that we're looking at, definitely want to look at this hurricane um, that um, uh, Ian that is going to be hitting Florida today. A Category Four at 155 mile per hour winds. Uh, <clears throat> and I think in the article here on Channel 27 they were saying it could reach or nearing 155 mile per hour <clears throat> winds. It's already, it's already there. Uh, it's 155 mile per hour winds uh, that are sustained right now. It's moving at nine miles per hour going north, northeast. Now, if you look at the map right here, it's going to cross the state of Florida. It's going to hammer the heck out of everybody. Uh, in southern Florida. Orlando, no doubt, is going to get, get hammered as well. But then it's going to cross back into the Atlantic. And if you pay close attention here, even in this, uh, this particular pro projected path there, they don't show it strengthening once it gets into the Atlantic. But you got to remember, that's the Gulf Stream. And the Gulf Stream is warm waters as well. So I could just imagine... As this thing goes back out and then comes back in, South Carolina is going to get hit. And what kind of winds is it going to have when it hits South Carolina? Now, no doubt it'll have already been broken down. We won't have the full-blown hurricane strength winds once it crosses the state of Florida, perhaps. But <clears throat> no one really knows for sure how much strength this thing could regather as it comes back in. Um... And granted, it is a Category 4, uh, which is a massive hurricane as far as strength-wise. But it reminds me of what I've been told so many times that we're going to see hurricanes that are going to exceed Category 4. Uh, and we've just not seen those type storms. And they're going to have to change them to hypercanes. The <clears throat> government has been very busy, from what I've been told, trying to steer these storms away from the United States. Now, they don't want Europe to know these things because when they are steering those storms, and if you've noticed so many of those storms that have formed over there off of the African coast here, they would come across here, if you follow my mouse here, and then suddenly they would go north and back out to the east again towards Europe. They don't want Europe knowing what they're doing because naturally it creates havoc for their own coastlines. Um, and can potentially cost, you know, millions of dollars worth of damage. And they don't want to end up being responsible for that. Um, so <clears throat> this is the reason why they don't tell anybody about what they're really up to there. And, but anyway, that, that's what we're looking at. And then also, too, um, we had over in Spain, I want to thank Dr. Rosa for sending this to me here. <clears throat> this was uh, the hailstorms and flooding. And I don't recall now if this was one of those storms that got moved to the east that uh, would have potentially turned into a hurricane if it had hit the United States there. But nonetheless, uh, sent back to the east there, goes over, Spain gets hit. Uh, and, and, and like I said, it could maybe not that at all, but, but nonetheless... The, the tragedy that's happening there in Spain, the destruction, the, the flooding, the hail. They said that, that they had not had hail since 2002 to the magnitude of what they had in this storm here. But the flooding, my gosh, look at what's happening uh, in uh, Spain there. So some places in a complete drought, other places, you know, flooding is, is beyond belief there. All right, now you guys already know about the uh, pipeline, the Nord Stream 2 pipeline that has been uh, leaking there in the, in the, in the ocean over there. Uh, it is now, the Kremlin is now saying that they cannot rule out that it is sabotage that has caused the Nord Stream 2 pipeline to be damaged. And I'm quite sure it is. And I can see where NATO would actually do that, especially with their military capabilities and being able to follow these pipelines under, underwater with subs, etc., things like that. Only to show Russia that, all right, you want to cut the pipelines off to Europe. Well, we also have our own way of causing you havoc 
We could destroy your pipeline if we wanted to. Uh, and you would have nobody to give the gas to in the first place. And this, the, 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 the alarming thing is, is that they would be willing to do it in the first place, willing to cause such a, an ecological disaster of leaking this gas out the way they're doing is just shows how low that uh, NATO commanders are willing to stoop in order to direct the narrative of how the Ukraine war is going to come play out. Now, remember, though, always keep in mind, NATO commanders are governed by a certain group of of individuals, um, I shouldn't say individuals, a certain group of people that are wanting Ukraine to become, uh, as we have often heard, and I'll maybe just see if we can't pull up an article that says that, um, that want Ukraine to become big Israel, right? <clears throat> here, here we go right there. Al Jazeera even has it, right? Uh, Zelensky says, wants Ukraine to become a big Israel. Hmm. That's interesting, right? And uh, and I'm sure many more other articles. Let's see. Here we go here. Um, AtlanticCouncil.org. And, you know, so you could you could go on and on and on and on with the articles out there about that. Of course, Middle East, Eastern nations are more so going to pay attention to this, whereas the West is not. But also, too, let's look at, uh, and I don't think I'm going to spell Menheim Schneerson's name correct, but he also was big into that, and I know I've already spelled it wrong. Um, hmm. Let's see here if we have anything on that just to kind of don't have don't have it right ready there. We have already reported that for you guys before you know about that. You know about um, Menachem Schneerson's issue when it comes to Ukraine. Um, and uh, just see if we can just out of curiosity, though. I don't know. I did spell his name correct. And I was wondering if we have that just quickly where we could see about where um, overtaking Ukraine. Wow, that's an interesting one right there. Just the, just the, just the title itself. Uh, did Chabad Jews orchestrate Ukraine war to establish their third Kazaria Kingdom. Haven't seen that particular uh, Christians for Truth article before. Oh, looky there. Edward Hudos was born. Edward uh, Edward Davidovich in uh, Kharkiv, Ukraine in 1945. An Orthodox Jewish family. In 1990, Hudos claims he was personally recruited and promoted by Chabad Lubavitcher Rabbi Schneerson. But he resigned his position once he real, realized the real aims that Chabad had for his native country of Ukraine. Since then, Hudos has been an outspoken critic of Chabad, warning the public about their agenda. This is not a, this is no joke, guys. This is very serious. You know, I, I've been warning about this. My my wife, of course, has warned about it for a long time. He said. Um, Though written in 2003, this chapter, the third Kazaria, goes far to explain the real basis of this recent war in Ukraine with Russia and how it fits in the larger picture of the desire of Chabad Lubavitch Jews to establish their third Kazaria in Ukraine. Ukraine today occupies a large portion of the land once known as the ancient Khazar kingdom, the true homeland rather than Israel of today's Ashkenazi Jews. Who has also written extensively on how Chabad Jews in Russia control Vladimir Putin and the Jewish oligarchs surrounding him. So as, I, as I've said before, Putin may be fighting against 
what he claims to be the New World Order or the uh, the Jewish bankers that control the United States or the IMF, etc., things like that. But he's still controlled. And that's what a lot of people just don't realize. Um, so it's, it's very sad, very sad. Now, I don't know anything about this uh, particular website here. So like I said, I just happened to look to see if I could find anything to remind you guys about that. But um, so if there's something that, that we're not uh, familiar with, uh, then uh, my apologies about that. Uh, there he is right there. That's a uh, that's, uh, former rabbi. He's actually now a Christian. Yeah, he became a Christian in his 70s. So God bless his heart for becoming a, a believer as well. I'm Steve Benin. Listen, you're listening to Israeli News Live. And I uh, hope you have a blessed day today. And if you're down in South Florida, definitely. I would not get in, be in the way of that storm there. If you can get out, definitely get out while you still can. God bless you and have a great evening.